You want to know what a certified baller PC gaming setup looks like? Keep watching. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we are back again with another PC gaming setup guide and oh my God, this is a good one. All of these parts were actually chosen by you guys, AKA the Twitch chat when I hosted a PC peripheral contest over on my Twitch channel a few weeks ago, twitch.tv slash Zach's Tech Turf, by the way, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. And this was our toughest competition to date, but man, this one turned out so great. Shout out to Filthy Knives, by the way, for winning the competition. But before we get into all these parts, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored sponsored by MMORC.com, a key reseller website that I teamed up with because they're offering the cheapest Windows 10 keys that I've seen so far, as well as a ton of other software keys. MMORC is offering you guys a super exclusive sale on the Windows 10 keys. Click that first link in the description and select add to cart, click place order, paste in the exclusive AF coupon code ZAH35, and then I'll give you a massive 35% discount dropping the price to under $10. After that, select your payment method and complete your order. Once you get the key, click start on your PC and type in activate, press enter, change product key, paste in the key, and there you go, activated Windows 10 for less than 10 bucks. Once again, feel free to head down to the links in the description and use that exclusive 35% off coupon code ZAH35. All right, so first and foremost, I'm sure that you've noticed by now that for today's setup, I have a baller laptop as our main PC for the day. But like I said in a previous setup guide, this setup is meant to be for your PC, no matter if you have a desktop, a laptop, or even an insanely powerful laptop like I have here. Either way, this will work for you. Real quickly, just as an introduction to this beast though, before getting into the rest of the peripheral parts list, this is the Asus Zephyrus Duo 15, which was kindly provided by Intel. And this is easily the most expensive piece of tech I have in my studio right now. The Duo 15 is rocking a dual screen design with the main monitor rocking a 1080p 300 Hertz, three millisecond IPS display. And then it also has this secondary smaller monitor, which is ridiculously baller. And I absolutely love it. Although I started off thinking this was a gimmick, I couldn't have been any more wrong. After a couple of weeks of use, I'm already so used to having the ability to do things like game on the main monitor while keeping a Twitch stream open. I can browse the web or watch YouTube videos while keeping an eye on our Discord server, or I can even do all of these things at once as the secondary screen has some real impressive Windows snapping features built right in. As far as the hardware goes, this model here is sporting an impressive 8 core and 16 threaded Intel i7 10875H, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz, and more importantly, an RTX 2070 Super Max-Q, which is just an obnoxious amount of power for a laptop. Now, I do want to show off more about this laptop, but I want to get into this peripheral list real quickly because that's going to impact all of you, whether you have a baller gaming laptop like this or just like a normal $400 gaming PC like most of us. Either way, we'll circle back to the laptop after all these peripherals. Starting with the gaming monitor for this setup, links to everything I talk about today are linked down in the description, by the way. This here is the AOC C24 G1A, which is a 24 inch 1080p 165 hertz one millisecond 1500 R curve panel and highly regarded as one of the best 1080p higher refresh rate monitors on the planet right now. This literally used to only stay in stock for like two minutes at a time. This did somewhat get recently replaced by the 24 G2 model, which is slightly newer, but now this older version sits around $145 on Amazon brand new and packs a ton of value. The panel and image quality are fantastic for the price and the stand that's included provides provides a ton of adjustability, which you don't typically see at this lower price range. And overall, it's just a 100% pure performance bang for your buck kind of monitor that nobody really has anything negative to say about it. Moving on, we have the keyboard, and this is the Daira DK61E, which is a budget 60% mechanical option that only costs $42 new on Amazon, and it's rated with 4.5 stars with over 3,000 reviewers, which is pretty nuts. The DK61E comes with options for Gator on blacks, blues, reds, silvers, or browns, which is what I have and here's what they sound like. Now, I actually got super excited about the acoustics when I first started my review. I started with the space bar and it just sounded amazing, but then I quickly found out that no other key sounds like the space bar and I was a little disappointed. It's not like the other keys sound bad or anything, but this space bar, for whatever reason, just sounds so clean, solid, and controlled. See if you can tell a difference in this next clip.
Other than that though, this keyboard is packing a detachable USB-C cable, which is great if you wanna customize it a bit. The switches are actually hot swappable if you wanna upgrade them in the future, and the keycaps themselves are PBT double shot. Moving along, we have the mouse, and this here is the SteelSeries Rival 3, which is yet another highly rated budget option currently sitting on Amazon for just $30 with 4.5 stars and over 5,000 reviews. It's rocking a true move core sensor, which is actually very good for this price point, and I had absolutely no problem slaying some noobs in Call of Duty Cold War. It's just it's headshots for days, man. Literally every kill with this mouse is a headshot, guaranteed. The DPI range is between 200 and 8500. It's sporting a pretty ergonomic and honestly kind of aerodynamic design as the height seems to be pretty low. There's also some RGBs that are pretty solid and these can be controlled from the SteelSeries software. And finally, for those of you that like to really nerd out about gaming mice grip styles, the SteelSeries website actually shows the dimensions for their recommended grip styles of claw and fingertip. Pretty neat. All right, so getting towards the end of this parts list, we have the headset. And now this one should look familiar. This is the Nubwo N7 gaming headset, which I actually featured in a previous gaming setup guide. And I explained in that video that I absolutely love this for the stupid low price tag of just $21. Apparently other people feel the same way as it's also rocking 4.5 stars on Amazon with over 14,000 reviews. And although this price tag is a little low to be featured in a baller setup guide like this, the N7 is certainly swinging above its weight class in terms of price. It's rocking a very lightweight and comfortable design. It has 50 millimeter drivers, which sound great, but remember these aren't gonna sound like a $100 pair of headphones or anything. There's an inline remote with exactly what you need, a volume dial and microphone mute rocker. And finally, it plugs in via a 3.5 millimeter connector. And there's even an included adapter for both microphone and stereo output if you need it. And finally, the last part of this setup guide is the RGB mouse pad. And although the YC, YC, SY RGB mouse pad was the selected part for the PC peripheral contest, I'm just gonna throw it out there that you can go with any of these sub $20 RGB mouse mousepad options that are on Amazon, they're pretty much all the exact same. There might be slightly different features, but they're all rocking a somewhat dim RGB light strip going around the outside, and they can simply be controlled with a push button up here. I'll have the link to the one that's in this video specifically down in the description. With all that out of the way though, this setup is obviously very capable of doing some serious gaming or even some streaming, but I do want to circle back to the Zephyrus Duo 15 gaming laptop because this thing deserves a little bit more camera time. For those of you wondering about the benchmarks of this super powerful gaming PC, I got you covered. First up, I tested the brand new Call of Duty Cold War in 1080p with high settings. During an online match, I got an FPS average of 148. All right, it's time to actually get serious. There we go. There's one. And there's two. Headshot. Did I just see somebody over there? Yep, camping. Of course, it's Call of Duty. Why wouldn't they be camping? I just don't understand why Call of Duty recruits people camping. Like, if you play me 1v1, you're gonna die. I just don't get it. Like, why do people feel the need to camp in Call of Duty? Like, you can play perfectly fine, just... Alright, I'm gonna start camping. I'm just gonna camp in here with you guys. Th th this is obviously the way to go. I'm getting out camped by camping snipers. I had to switch maps, guys. Headshot. We were getting owned on that last one. That was terrible. Look this guy trying to follow me. All right, this map we're starting to own again. Let's go. Sit down. Oh, wow. Even killed the camper. Let's go. I can feel it. It's coming. Watch this guy. Headshot all day every day. After that, I had to throw in the brand new and incredibly demanding Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And man, this game sure isn't optimized yet. Quite possibly never will be based on the previous Assassin's Creed games. And in 1080p and high settings, I got just right at 60 FPS. And finally, just so I had an excuse to land some more headshots for this video, I decided to benchmark Valorant, not necessarily pushing this laptop to its knees or anything, but regardless, here are the results. In 1080p and high settings, this laptop cranked out 232 FPS. All right, so Valorant isn't exactly going to push this laptop laptop to its knees, but I want to show off some headshots, so leave me alone. It's all day! I just can't emphasize it enough, guys. This is the game that I go pro in. It's just, uh, like, I, I can't not headshot somebody in this game. It's just headshot after headshot, look! Okay, this is not the best positioning for not having a sniper rifle. Doesn't matter, though. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Still long-range headshots without a sniper. Hello. Sit down. Watch this. Watch this. You 
can't outduel me. Get out of here. Listen here, I'm on the Zephyrus Duo. This is a beast of a laptop. Sit down. Moving on to the build quality, this Zephyrus Duo actually looks almost identical to the Zephyrus G that I featured in my $250 laptop setup guide a few weeks ago, although it is certainly a bit heftier. For ports and I.O., on the left-hand side, there's a power port and then a microphone and stereo ports. On the right side, there's two USB Type-A ports and a Thunderbolt USB-C port. And for a throwback, there's actually some I.O. on the back as well. Here you'll find a full-size Ethernet, another Type-A USB, and finally an HDMI port. This laptop also seems to be pretty well ventilated as there's a ton of breathing holes at the bottom and on the sides. As far as using this laptop every day goes, I've been really enjoying that second screen like I said in the beginning of this video, but there's definitely a learning curve with having that keyboard sit so close to you as that's not how laptops have been for the last few decades. The actual keyboard and trackpad are great quality, but if you're sitting on the couch for example, it's just not a natural position to type so close to your body, and you either have to get used to it or extend the laptop further away from you which also feels less natural as well. To be fair though, I don't think they designed this laptop to be a casual web surfing on the couch type of laptop. This beast is made to be put on the desk inside a baller gaming setup and that's exactly what I did here today. Be sure to let me know in the comment section what do you think about this setup guide. I'm also interested in what parts you want to see in the next setup guide so be sure to let me know what you want to see me try out next. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video.